Preaching and teaching are first and foremost a calling. However, there are some basic guidelines that I've found helpful over the years as I've prepared messages almost on a weekly basis. I like to use this process to prepare and develop upcoming messages. Keep in mind you probably have your own method of note taking and mental cues that works best for you. And if so, stick with what works best for you in those areas. This step-by-step -step process is only intended to help you prepare the message that you believe God is developing within your heart, not change the uniqueness of how you deliver it. Hey, this is Evan from DailyChristianHelp.com, where we help leaders gain confidence and build dependable teams. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare a sermon in seven steps. This first step may be too obvious, but it requires mentioning, and it's what does God want me to say? As a teacher and preacher for almost 18 years, there were times where I wrestled with what does God want me to say? I would flip back and forth between Bible verses, listening to sermons, or checking and scanning through books. Eventually, I would humbly realize, you know what? I probably haven't spent enough time asking God for clarity and to discover, God, what exactly do you want me to say? Prayer is the first step to delivering a compelling message in any setting. Step two is asking the question, why is this message important? As you're formulating your message and preparing to deliver the sermon, it's important to ask questions like, if people do not hear or listen to this message, what will happen? What do people need or long for as it relates to this message? What next step or decision should I lead people towards that will help make their life more productive and better? These types of questions can be very clarifying and help steer the direction of your message. Simon Sinek once said that infusing a message with passion requires two things. To only speak about things you care about and to only talk about things that you understand. Answering the few questions like I provided before will help you have a clear vision of why your message is important and why it matters so much and as a result will help you to connect more deeply with the heart of your message the third step is asking the question what problem does this message solve as a teacher or preacher you want people to engage with what you're saying of course we want to inspire people towards change and increase people's desire for a deeper walk and a closeness with God Unfortunately, most people are tired and in a hurry, and therefore they want answers that will immediately help them. Identifying a problem that your next message solves will help you do at least two things. It'll increase empathy for your congregation or audience, and it will pique interest from them. Highlighting a problem that people are familiar with creates instant relatability. To identify the problem, ask questions like, what do people want related to my sermon, and what keeps them from getting it? Next, begin writing down your thoughts related to that question so that you're able to identify and consider possible problems. The void between what people want and what keeps them from getting it is the problem. Therefore, clarify the issue and express it. Then dig deeper into the problem by considering how this is making them feel, how it's affecting their life, and why it's wrong that this problem exists. Providing clarity around the problem and expressing empathy for why it isn't easy will help your congregation connect and relate to you faster. Step four is asking the question, what do I need to know? The amount of time it can take to prepare a sermon can vary week to week and from person to person. And it's a balance between trusting God to provide you with the words and leaning into what you've taken time to become familiar with and to prepare for. I believe the time used to prepare a message is a holy time. It's a time to receive, learn, and to hear from God. It's also a time to be challenged, convicted, and convinced of what you're about to deliver. Because of this, take time to study the full context of your passage and cross-reference other passages to help support the idea that you hope to convey. Make every effort you can to clarify the big idea. Read commentaries and listen to other sermons that also elaborate on the same topic. And of course, take tons of notes to create an information resource for you to build your message upon. Adequately planning for your message will further empower you to deliver God's message with conviction and confidence. Step five is answering the question, how can I effectively communicate this sermon? After you've acquired all this information, it's time to structure your notes into a bit of a map, if you will, to help you follow your notes as you deliver your message. Although this is an easy step to overlook or diminish, it's best to efficiently organize your notes to make them easy to follow. Also, creating a structure to your message will help those listening more easily follow along. When messages are unorganized and disjointed, you leave your listeners on their own to assemble something meaningful with the information that you're sharing. Think of dumping a box of Legos out onto a table, but never providing the instructions. 
All of the pieces are essential, but the user may build something completely different from the original intent. And this isn't always a bad thing, but in many cases it leaves the person scratching their head wondering what am I supposed to do with all these pieces, or in your case, the different components of your message. If you need help creating effective three-point sermon outlines, I'll leave a helpful video for you in the card above. Structuring your sermon is like providing the instructions to a Lego set for those listening. The structure you provide to your sermon helps those listening understand and know how to assemble the information that you're providing. Your message should have a clear direction that it's heading, a beginning, a middle, and an end with a cohesive call to action. Donald Miller teaches that the human brain is drawn towards clarity and away from confusion. In addition to three-point sermon outlines, which I'll also leave a link to that in the description, there are a couple sermon roadmaps that can help you assemble your messages effectively. The first is a series of three questions that ask what, so what, and now what. So first think, what do you want your audience to know? Next, why does it matter? And then lastly, which next steps should they take? So what, so what, and now what? The other roadmap that some people find useful is hook, book, look, took. So the hook is deciding how you will immediately create engagement. How will you get the people interested in listening to what you have to say? The book is the text that you're using for the basis of your message. Look is discussing and sharing what all of it means. And took represents the next steps that people can take to practically apply the message. Using a framework to help you structure your messages will be tremendously clarifying for you and for those that are listening. Step six is clarifying the statements that you most want people to remember. In this step, you'll comb through your notes and identify key thoughts and ideas that people most need to understand. Once you identify these big thoughts and ideas, begin wordsmithing them to make them more clear and more concise. Consider if the statements are easy to remember or to write down. A good exercise is to make them tweetable. At one time, Twitter's rules were that a tweet could only be 144 characters. So as you're formulating your key points and ideas, can you condense them into 144 characters and still make them crystal clear? Practicing this and using this as a loose rule will help you ensure that your main points are short, memorable, and easy to understand. Step seven, the final step, is asking where is there room for improvement? Spending time in prayer, preparation, and practice will help you build your confidence not only in what God wants to say, but in your ability to deliver it. As painful as it can be, go over your notes out loud. Let yourself hear what you sound like, and as you go through your notes, identify areas where transitions are difficult or where things may be difficult to understand. Read through your notes and internalize them, allowing God to securely position the message within your heart. Kerry Newhoff has shared that his best piece of advice related to sharing a message is not to memorize it, but to ensure you understand it. In other words, focus on internalizing the message rather than your ability to execute it verbatim, word for word. Again, also identify where transitions are rough and think through how you can make them seamless and easier to follow. Your understanding of your message will deepen as you spend time absorbing the content, working through it, and practicing it. Allow this sermon preparation process to be a guide and not your master. However, it can help you formulate and deliver a more cohesive, convicting, and engaging message the next time you're ready to share. Hey, let me know in the comments which tips you found the most helpful or which ones you would add to the ones that I shared. And for more preaching help, be sure to check out the link to the sermon preparation worksheet in the description. If this video helped you, don't forget to like it and be sure to hit the subscribe button. This is Evan from dailychristianhelp.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.